One of the life lessons that I was taught early on was to be able to identify and use my voice. Now that you know a little bit about me, I do want to spend um, a little bit of time talking about finding your voice. Finding your voice and using it is not always easy. By far, there are consequences, especially if you are a female and you look like me to finding your voice because instead of being considered assertive like our male Caucasian counterparts, we are often considered aggressive. So let me be clear. Let me start first with a definition of uh, assertive communication. And I shared with you before that I was a former adjunct professor of interpersonal communication. So this um, definition comes from interpersonal communication, everyday encounters by Julia T. Wood. This is the seventh edition. And what it says is um, assertion, a clear, non-judgmental statement of what we feel, need, or want, not synonymous with aggression, which involves putting our needs ahead of others' needs, sometimes at a cost to them. So what we're talking about today is protecting you, putting your needs first while you value the needs of others. But valuing the needs of others does not mean that you do it at a cost to yourself. So, um, and this, when we talk about um, these type of, when we talk about communication styles, we're talking about a continuum that starts with, you know, passive, that goes to passive aggressive, to aggressive, to assertive. So what I'm trying to get us from is from passive to assertive without being aggressive. And I'll go ahead and I'll um, insert a graphic here that talks about that continuum. So passive is emotionally dishonest, indirect, inhibited, self-denying, blaming, and apologetic. Passive aggressive, emotionally dishonest, indirect, self-denying at first, self-enhancing, at the expense of others later. Aggressive, inappropriately honest, direct, expressive, attacking, blaming, controlling, self-enhancing at the expense of others. And assertive, appropriately honest, direct, self-enhancing, expressive, self-confident, empathetic to emotions of all involved. It's important to note that being assertive in your communication denotes a level of self-confidence, not to be confused with arrogance. You can communicate with individuals honestly, authentically, directly, all while maintaining your position and appreciating theirs. And that's the disconnect between being arrogant and aggressive and being assertive and self enhancing or self valuing is that you're not going to let someone transgress over your rights in the process of protecting their own. A couple tips that I want to share with you regarding communicating assertively include one to honor respect, value and appreciate your feelings. It's okay to feel some kind of way about the way or be angry. Let's use direct communication. It's okay to be angry or to be offended by the way that someone treats you. That's number one. Two, use assertive body language. So when you're talking to someone and you're asserting yourself, make eye contact. Don't cower, sit up straight, stand up straight, whatever the situation, and, and meet the situation head on. Three, be factual and non-judgmental. Describe the behavior and, your, and the issue that you have with it. 
I am an objective thinker. I am data driven. A lot of times you will find that I will, even in the video, support what I'm saying, my thesis with data. I'm going to go back and see and do some research to see what is being said about it by the experts in the area or the topic and and support my main thought with, you know, um, with the data around the topic or with the research that's been done. So do try to do the same thing in your communication as opposed to, you know, judging the behavior. Start with describing it, identifying the behavior and being factual about it. Um, so I'm just reading my notes. I want to make sure I give you everything here. Stick to description. So don't over dramatize it. Just kind of succinctly lay everything out. So an example would be when I'm interrupted, I lose my train of thought, which hinders my creativity thus making it difficult for me to continue to contribute to the conversation. So let's say you're in a meeting or you're talking to someone because we're going to do this in the frame of leadership. I mean, this also works in it with, you can it transfer to personal interactions as well, but you want to stay calm. You want to have your tone, uh, be neutral. You want to make eye contact. And if someone complete, uh, constantly interrupts you all the time, and even though it grates your nerves because, um, you know, you find it to be rude, then instead of saying, oh, you're so rude, you can say what the actual problem, you know, describe the problem, the interruption. I lose train of thought, thus making it difficult for me to continue to contribute to the conversation. You describe the issue. The fourth tip I'm going to give you, and this is not something new to you. You've heard it before. This is how important it is. Use I statements, own your feelings. I feel like X when Z happens. And that way the person should not immediately go to the defensive. I mean, theories are one thing, but putting them in practice is something different. So theoretically the person shouldn't feel like you're targeting them, but in real life, sometimes they still will. So use I statements um, that allows you to think in neutral terms and to find um, a non-confrontational way of saying it, yet still asserting that you feel this way about it. And I'll uh, go ahead and put uh, some dialogue on the screen as well that kind of gives some examples or a checklist in the description. My last tip, there are many tips for being assertive, but um, I just wanted to hit you with five quick tips that you can immediately apply. My last tip, which might take some of you off guard, is to continue to talk until you find a solution. Again, we want to get to a point where you collaborate with the individual, right? There is a solution every time. Sometimes it's just semantics. Sometimes it's just the words. Sometimes, and my mother used to say this all the time when I was growing up, while she taught me to speak my, you know, to find my voice and use it, was when you use it, you know, it's not what you're saying that's the problem right now, but it's how you're saying it. So think about, you know, your tone. Think about the quick quips. Think about sarcasm and all of those things and think about what you're, you know, be cognizant of those things so you can pull back on them is what I mean by think about it. But I want you to realize that the goal that you're trying to achieve is to be able to maintain your rights, value your, you know, feelings in the situation while also appreciating the other persons and kind of bringing them in. That is imperative to leadership. You're not always going to agree with the people that you're trying to talk to and or work with. So the end goal should be to get to a point where communication isn't the obstacle, where you can communicate and you can get to a point where you can eventually collaborate with one another, where they understand how you feel and how to communicate. You understand how they feel and how to communicate with them so that you can get to 
the end, which would be a win-win for everyone, which is what collaboration is. In closing, there are so many things that have been imparted to me throughout my life that in that moment, I didn't recognize as significant or as significant as it would be looking back. Remember, and I talk about watching the footsteps in life in, in one of my other videos and, and um, in hindsight, the benefit of hindsight. So in hindsight, as I think about leadership topics and I think about the things that have impacted me along my journey and the things that I still want to instill in others as I continue forward, you know, I think about all of these things that seemed insignificant, like finding your voice and using it and then how it led me to, you know, finding my voice is not an issue right now and has it been an issue for a long time, but positioning it, positioning my voice in a manner in which it's non-threatening and it's inviting um, has been something else that I've had to work on throughout my tenure. And so that's something that, you know, you're never perfected. If you're perfected, you're gone. Your job here on this earth is over. We're always, we continue to be a work in progress. And the more mindful we are about where we are in the process, who we are, our challenges, our opportunities, our strengths, the more that we can refine those things so that we can be in a position where we can really begin to walk in purpose and really begin to, you know, assist other people along their journey. Um, you know, I don't believe that I have every answer, which is why I always ask you all to comment. Still waiting for some comments about how you do things. Um, and that's a hint right now to like the video, subscribe, put a comment and share to other people who can benefit and who can contribute to our conversation. But I am not um, arrogant enough to believe that I have every answer. I don't. I'm also not naive enough to know, to believe that my life has and my experiences mean nothing. I believe that, you know, I've had those experiences so I can share them with other people. I believe that's why I'm in, you know, um, the, the areas in, in that I'm in as far as my public life and my professional life, learning and development as a representative so that I can give back. Um, and so this is just part of it. So I hope there's something that you also are willing to contribute for the greater good of our community. Um, and I hope that you're giving back along your journey in life as well, because together we do better. Together we are better. Um, so thank you guys for joining me one more time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment on this video.